So let's check out the Spark software now. Here it is. This is how Spark opens by default in this compact view. And I'm actually doing the screen capture at a 720 vertical resolution and this compact default view of Spark fits exactly in a 720 height. All right. So there's the Spark and we've got a scroll bar on the right to scroll between the top, the centre and the bottom areas but it's actually much easier to use these three buttons on the toolbar to jump between the top, centre and bottom views. Okay. Now if you've got a like very high resolution bigger monitor or a monitor that switches to portrait view you can if you want drag spark out to be vertically as tall as you can get it on your screen like you can do with reason rack you know you can do that but i think it's probably more convenient to use it in this compact view because it takes up less space doesn't it you know anyway that's how spark opens by default so we've got three views the center view always shows the gui of the controller the top view always defaults to show the pattern sequencer for the current pattern, but we can also access the song sequencer and the preferences here. And the bottom area by default always shows the studio view where we edit our instruments, but we can also access the mix and the library views here. All right? But whether you're in top, bottom or centre view, the toolbar always sits across the top. So let's quickly look at that. Um, we've got uh, a load and save button pair here. Save gives us save or save as, but we've got a currently loaded, uh, this is a factory project loaded, so when I go for save I can only save as because you can't overwrite factory projects. Okay, then the load button gives us load a factory project, which is the kit and all the patterns. Load a user project, the kit and all the patterns. Or load an empty project, which has two options, empty kit, and if you click that, it wipes Spark. So there are no instruments, no patterns ready to build something from scratch. Or you can load a factory kit. Now that loads the kit of your choice, but wipes the sequences ready to build a new song. And you choose that if you want to build a new song with a given kit, or load that kit as the basis to start editing it, and then save that as a new kit with your own patterns as a new project, you know, whatever, blah, blah. OK, next to those two buttons we've got this display here, and that shows the currently loaded project title. I can left click on that display and load either a user or a factory project, but from here I'm always loading a project. That's the kit and all the patterns, right? OK, across from that we've got the volume control for the metronome, and if you click on the metronome icon it turns the metronome on and off. Uh, next to that we've got the display here, look, for the tempo, yeah? If I double click on that I can type in a tempo. After the top centre bottom buttons we've got this initialise button, this is clever. It disconnects and then reconnects the hardware controller, very useful that. All right. And finally over here we've got the output meter and output area. We've got the output meter, we've got a CPU display, you know, activity meter and there's this soft clip we can bring in and out and that just keeps your output from getting all nasty if it gets too loud. OK, so that's your toolbar. OK, now, this is the default view of Spark. It always, when it loads, defaults to the centre view, which is the drum machine GUI. And there's no need for me to tell you how all this works, because it works absolutely 100% identically in every way to the hardware controller. So if you want to learn how to use this, just watch the previous chapter of the hardware controller tutorial, because everything here works the same. You've just got some differences because you're using a mouse. So, for example, you can't access every single thing you can do on the effects pad. But we're going to come to the effects pad in its own chapter. Um, you To switch the big rotary wheel here between its two different modes, you click on the word instrument or click on the word kit. Other differences are that you can drag any pattern and drop it onto any other pattern in the pattern wheel to copy a pattern from one location to another inside the currently selected bank. Or you can drag a bank button and drop it on another bank to copy all the patterns in one bank to another bank. But otherwise copying is the same as the hardware. Other differences are that um, you don't have to click select and then choose on a you know click on a pad to change the currently selected instrument so it's lit and currently selected here. Yeah. You can do that the same as the hardware just latch select and click on a pad change the currently selected instrument but we can do that by simply clicking on the number of each instrument to change the currently selected instrument okay the other thing is you've got to remember that the select button is latching on the software it isn't on the hardware of course 
you have to be careful that when you use the select function you don't forget to de-latch it after using it because say that you latch select and you do some function with select latched then you forget to de-latch it if you click any other button that has a secondary select function it will perform that function when you click on it because you forgot to de-latch select so you have to be careful to always de-latch that after you've used it okay and that's that's this software area it's otherwise it's exactly the same as the hardware uh, there is one other thing which is this question mark here if you click it it puts an overlay over the GUI for the controller which tells us what all the things do so every th button that's got a light blue legend above it that tells you what that button will do if select is latched because select is haloed in blue you see and the other thing that the overlay does is it just makes the titles below each instrument control part quite obviously a drop down list so you can click the title and change the parameter for any part. Okay, but that works, of course, without the overlay on. Just click on the title, you can change the parameter of any instrument control part. Otherwise it works the same as the hardware. Okay, you select the instrument, you can put in the notes for the pattern for that instrument. You can go into record and actually click on the pads to record things. You can write your controller moves by moving the parts, etc, etc, right? Okay, so that's the center area. Now, the only other thing is that um, there are other things you can do with these instrument control parts, and there are some things you can do with these channel strip control parts. Remember, the channel strip control parts are always assigned to the currently selected and highlighted instrument. So there are some other things we can do in the software with these parts, but I don't want to get into that until we've looked at the sequencer, the pattern sequencer. Okay, so let's move on now and look at the pattern sequencer, the default view for the top area.